All right, then we're going to continue on with our investigation of inverse trig functions and remind ourselves what do we do for cotangent, cosecant, secant, and the answer is pretty much the same thing. So let's remind ourselves if so far we looked at uh, y equals sine inverse of x and realize its range was from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's where it spit out values. When it's cosine inverse of x, it's going to spit out values between 0 and pi. Those are our anchors. Because when we have y equals tan inverse of x, like we did in the last section, well, that's going to behave like who's on top of tangent, and tangent sine over cosine. So it's going to behave like sine, and its output is going to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, we're not including those endpoints because that's where tangent's undefined. Remember, cosine's on the bottom, and cosine of pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 is 0. If we looked and extended ourselves to cotangent of x, like they do in this section, that's going to be like cosine, um, because cosine's on top, and it's going to be between 0 and pi, again, not including those endpoints. And then as we get to the do cosecant first. That's the flip of sine. So it's going to have the same minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 outputs that are in there. Um, that's the range of those uh, values that are going to come out um, when it spits out its values. Sorry for the hesitation. And then um, the last one then would be secant inverse of x and that would be between 0 and pi. Okay, it would spit out values between those two because it's the flip of cosine. And so we're just going through and looking at all of those. So for my first example that I saw, they simply said, hey, what's the cotangent inverse of the square root of 3? Okay, well, cotangent inverse of the square root of 3 We'll think about that for a minute and realize, oh, it's going to be a pi over 6 reference angle, right? If we think about um, the cotangent being cosine over sine, who's going to give me a nice root 3? Um, it's going to be the pi over 6 angle, right? That's going to take the 1 half and divide it by, I'm sorry, going to take the root 3 over 2 and divide it by the 1 half and we get a pi over 6. It's going to be positive. Right? It, it, if whatever you're taking the inverse of is positive, in this case root 3 is positive, we're going to be in that first quadrant always. Second question that I saw, cosecant inverse of negative 2. I usually think of cosecant inverses as cosine inverses of the flip and I just turn it back into the last section, right? If you had me in class. So if I'm thinking, hey, what angle do I... Oh, cosecant's not the flip of cosine. What's it the flip of? I'm glad I caught that right away. It's the flip of sine, right? Good morning. Okay, it's the flip of sine inverse. And so what angle do I take the sine of to get one half? Oh, a pi over six reference angle again. Now... It's negative, so it's got to be a negative pi over 6 to be in the range of that. So third example, I'm just going to build off of this one. If I had the secant inverse of negative 1 half, I would flip that and say, well, this is the same as the cosine inverse. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to call that negative 1 half. That has actually no solution. I was, my small brain wanted the same problem and realized it would be a negative 1 half here. Then I have to say, well, what cosine gives me a, a one half? Well, that's an over three reference angle, and it's not positive, so it can't be in the first quadrant. And I remember, oh, cosine's in that second quadrant, and first and second quadrant, so it's got to be second quadrant, and I get a two pi over three output. So notice secant has the exact same output as its flip cosine. So that's why they're so interconnected awesome. So they'll do some calculator stuff again just so you know those buttons but even more important is something like this. They have these types of ones and we didn't want you to shut down on them. Tangent of cosine inverse of root 2 over 2. 
Well, you know what? The best way to handle this is just to talk yourself through it. it cosine inverse, what angle do I take the cosine of and get root 2 over 2? Well, it's positive, so it's going to be from the first quadrant, and you know it's pi over 4. And what's the tangent of pi over 4? Well, you know that's 1, and we're finished. All right, very quickly going through that. Fifth one, secant of sine inverse of the same, root 2 over 2. Okay, and, oh, but this one's negative. Awesome. So the sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 is the same as asking yourself what angle do I take the sine of and get root 2 over 2? Well we know that that's pi over 4. Now it would be pi over 4 um, in but it needs to be negative so it's going to be negative pi over 4. So I need to take the secant of negative pi over 4. Well that's equal to 1 over the cosine of negative pi over 4. That's personally how I think about that. Well, that's 1 over, well, that's a fourth quadrant angle, so cosine's positive, so this is root 2 over 2. And so, what is that? Well, that's just root 2. Okay, hopefully you see that. If you don't, I'll take it in stages. I'm thinking you see it because of having to play around with these in your last class. But if not, 1 over something flips it. And when you rationalize the denominator, you get 2 root 2 over 2. Your twos cancel out, and you get a nice root two. That might have drove somebody crazy. Like, why are you doing all that extra work? Only to make sure people see it for what it is. Um, many will see that root two over two is where they initially got it, one over root two. So we have stuff like this, cosine inverse of the sine of negative 5 pi over 4. So this is different because the inverse functions on the outside. Well, what's this going to be? Cosine inverse? Well, we could just figure this out number-wise if we wanted to. Cosine inverse of the sine of negative 5 pi over 4. So negative 5 pi over 4, where are you negative 5 pi over 4? Well, you're in quadrant 2. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, quadrant 2, right? Right here, here's negative 5 pi over 4. Well, the sign of that then is going to be positive. So I get a positive root 2 over 2. And cosine inverse of a positive number is going to spit out in the first quadrant and obviously have an over 4 reference angle. So it's pi over 4 and we're finished. That nice. And so just making sure that we remember all of our angles. Now, if you remember from your trigonometry class, we absolutely don't need to know the angles in order to get an exact answer in a problem like this. I saw this one along the way and thought we could do it. Um, how would you do something like this? Well, first thing you would do is draw it because we have no idea what this is. But I know the angle is down here. I know that the angle is in the fourth quadrant because of the negative on it. So sine's going to spit this guy out in the fourth quadrant. Now what's its sine? Its sine is negative six, negative root six over ten. So negative root six is the opposite, and the hypotenuse is ten. So we need to figure out this guy. I'll call this guy x for obvious reasons. So we need to figure out x. So what's x? Well, we know x squared plus negative root 6 squared is got to be equal to 10 squared. Or x squared plus 6 is got to be equal to 100. Or x squared is equal to 100 and, oh, not 106. Sorry about that. Going to take 6 off. So 94. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put the square root on it. 94. So x is equal to the square root of 94. Right, coming through there. So, we got a nice crazy number out of there, but that's what they have. Now, I don't know much about 94. Let's divide it in half. 94 divided by 2, 47. 
47 seems prime not much we can do there so make sure that we're okay so far so what do we do we knew that the sine of an angle was a negative number so it's got to be quadrant 4 why because it spits out between quadrant 4 and quadrant 1 between minus pi over 4 I'm sorry minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 we knew the opposite over hypotenuse was negative 6 over 10 and our x is positive square root of 94 so we put that in there get a hundred subtract away the 6 get 94 take the square root and it is a positive number coming in there so let me come in here grab my eraser again and we now know that this guy is root 94 now all we have to do is get the cotangent so what's the cotangent easy cotangent is well tangent is opposite over adjacent so remember Sokotoa tangents opposite over adjacent so cotangent is simply and I'm gonna come up here and write it adjacent which is root 94 over opposite which is negative root 6 now we can do some reduction there so 94 uh, is divided by 2 I get 47 6 divided by 2 is 3 so I'm getting this negative root 47 over 3 I've got to rationalize so what's 47 times 3 well that's 141 so now I'm looking at negative square root of 141 over 3 and that's exactly what they had as their answer um, is negative 141 over 3 I had written down what they had as an answer I hadn't worked it out yet but it's perfect okay so yes they're gonna give us nasty stuff they were nicer in our trig classes sometimes here's a nice one right this one actually followed it but just to show you that there's niceness in there tan of sine inverse of negative 12 thirteenths no problem what is this well it's a negative so it's going to be in quadrant 4 for a sine the opposite is negative 12 the hypotenuse is 13 and when you run this you'll realize it's a 5 12 13 triangle so we're almost done what's the tangent opposite negative 12 over adjacent 5 and we're finished so it could be really quick right just like that just to stress something how about number 9 being this tangent of cosine inverse of negative 12 13 where's that one gonna be if I hesitate for a minute and have you tell me where's that angle it's of a negative it's not in quadrant 4 because cosine inverse can't go there it's in quadrant 2 and so we draw our triangle here cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and your fives right here so what's tangent tangents opposite over adjacent and it just gets flipped which makes a whole lot of sense but um, very could be very nice so I didn't want you to think that they're all crazy like this guy right here but even this guy wasn't crazy they just picked numbers right you can deal with numbers um, and so it gives us lots of different practice so have fun with it um, try not to be too frustrated but reach out if there are frustrating problems and I'm happy to help you it would be best for you to have made an attempt first and then um, try these problems so or I'm sorry, it's made an attempt first, and then contact me, and we can go over what you tried, um, and then readjust as needed, all right? Enjoy this work. Thanks so much.